streaming live across the country, tackling the topics everyone is talking about online. Share, engage, and interact. This is Newsfeed Now. Now on this Thursday, I'm Hillary Hunt, but we want to get right to what's flooding everyone's social media timelines on this Thursday. The unrest in our nation's capital. We do have a panel of journalists standing by for you in D.C., but first we want to talk about how lawmakers, they worked overnight to certify the election after that mob of Trump supporters stormed the U.S. Capitol to protest the presidential election results. The protests turned into riots and it left at least four people dead and injured several others. D.C.'s Raquel Martin has the latest. And the people's work continues. After chaos erupted, when the president's supporters forced their way into the halls of Congress, lawmakers returned to the Capitol to certify the Electoral College results. Criminal behavior will never dominate the United States Congress. We will not be diverted from our duty. The uprising prompted some Republicans, like outgoing Georgia Senator Kelly Leffler, to reverse course. And I cannot now in good conscience object to the certification. Count me out. Enough is enough. Still, more than 100 House lawmakers and six Republican senators voted to reject the Electoral College votes in some states. And so this is the appropriate place for these concerns to be raised. Missouri Senator Josh Hawley, who led objections in the Senate, insists unfounded allegations of fraud should be investigated. Democrats slammed the idea. They're asking us to ignore court rulings, ignore Republican election officials, and even worse, ignore the will of the people. And blame President Trump for stoking the violence. This mob was invited to come to Washington on this day by this president. The nose have it. Ultimately, objections to results in Pennsylvania when and Arizona Senate were opposed. Shall be deemed a sufficient declaration of the person's elected president. Congress certified Joe Biden's victory just after 3 a.m. That was Raquel Martin reporting for us. She's actually a part of our panel this morning, as well as Anna Warnicki. Both of these ladies joining us from Washington, D.C. this morning. And ladies, a very different look in Washington after that unrest yesterday. Let's start with Raquel. You guys tell me what's going on there today. Well, a lot of people waking up to uh, the chaos that unraveled on Capitol Hill just yesterday, and it's a grim day uh, here on Capitol Hill. These rioters vandalized the Capitol. There is glass everywhere. They have spilled out papers across some of the lawmakers' desks. Uh, so a lot of people are uh, just shaken by, by what unraveled, but we know that lawmakers went ahead and made sure that they finished the job to certify the electoral college counts last night. Anna? Yeah, I could not agree more with Raquel is saying. I think everyone's just waking up uh, it definitely to a much more uh, somber but safer D.C. just because there's just so much more law enforcement presence uh, on the streets. We had a lot of, uh, you know, D.C. police, Maryland police, Virginia police, Virginia State troopers, everyone coming down, uh, National Guard um, as well. Um, you know, a lot of people, they were called after uh, the fact that after the protesters and things really escalated at the Capitol. So I think people are just, uh, you know, waking up to uh, a safer D.C see but uh also you know looking back at what happened yesterday and, and i think everyone's just still really in shock yeah a lot of people in shock that shock waves you know going throughout states and another thing that just came down recently ladies is the fact that um you know mark zuckerberg coming out saying that he is now banning for the time being president trump from not only facebook but also instagram if you guys could give me your take on that situation well, the president had been warned from the social media platforms for months at this point after he kept violating some of their um, safety precautions. And we know some of the tweets and, and Facebook posts that the president shared and posted yesterday uh, also violated those those rules. So we saw Twitter um, suspend the president and Facebook did the same. And now we're hearing, obviously, from Mark Zuckerberg that that'll be extended. He says that could be extended indefinitely or just until a complete and safe transition of power occurs. Um, that is after maybe January 20th, after President-elect Biden is inaugurated. But again, uh, this was a long time coming. Uh, because they have issued warnings um, all along. And Anna, speaking yeah, I, of, of Twitter, you know, President Trump putting out a tweet saying that he has agreed to make a peaceful transition in, you know, his last few weeks in office. I Yeah, and you know, one question I, I actually heard a lot yesterday was why haven't we heard from the president? And it was because we, we couldn't. We hear him mostly from Twitter and we, uh, you know, he tweets um, multiple times a day and that's where people really uh, hear from the president for the most part. And right now we can't hear from him because his Twitter is blocked. Um, and so that's that's 
primarily the reason why we haven't heard from the president. But um, I think that this is just a lot of social media, uh, you know, giants really cracking down uh, on what they said could be uh, dangerous uh, rhetoric that is coming from the president's Twitter account. And, you know, and some of that rhetoric very off-putting and the violence very off-putting to a lot of his fellow Republicans, so so much so that we actually saw it during the certification of the vote. Raquel, you talked about it in your story. Talk a little bit about some of those lawmakers that said, I'm not standing for it anymore. I, Lindsey Graham, for instance, who said he, he was fully with Trump and he says, not anymore. I just can't do this after the violence that was incited. That's right. We saw several senators, uh, Republican senators, step back from their initial objections. I know in my story you referred to uh, Georgia Senator Kelly Leffler, who will now be uh, replaced by uh, the new Democrat who won the race back in Georgia. Uh, she was saying that she, out of good conscience, could no longer object to what um, the Electoral College counts, talking about the riots and whatnot. And we also saw other Republicans just speak plainly that enough is enough. And, and the violence has gone too far, and it's really time to simmer down this rhetoric. So it's definitely a switch on the Senate side. On the Republican, or on the House side, rather, Republicans, there are many more of them sticking to uh, objecting to the electoral vo uh, college count. People were being applauded as they spoke on the House floor, those Republicans. Uh, so a little bit of a divide on how the Senate and the House is handling this, but there is a lot more Republicans coming forward and saying and uh, you know, condemning what happened yesterday and saying they no longer want to fight this fight. And Anna, will you take us a little bit through, if people haven't seen these videos of, you know, these um, said Trump supporters breaking through police, getting inside of the Capitol, talk, us, talk to us and kind of walk through what took place yesterday. Well, yesterday, um, it, it really started um, actually at um, near the White House where the president was giving his speech to the protesters. And we're in our studio. It's about a block away from the Capitol. Uh, we have a, a live camera on um, on the Capitol as well. So we were watching, uh, you know, crowds uh, start leaving the Trump uh, speech area and make their way over to the U.S. Capitol. And that's when things really just started uh, to escalate. And just the pure number of people that showed up just so quickly, uh, pushing their way into the Capitol steps. And it didn't take long for them to knock down the Capitol door, shatter the glass. And once they were inside, it was just really hard for Capitol Police to, to contain them. And it wasn't long before they were uh, on the chamber floor. Yeah, multiple arrests made in that. But while that was happening in D.C., some big movements happening in Georgia. We're going to come back to our panel in just a little. This is something that is going to also cause a shakeup in politics. The final results from Georgia's two Senate runoffs, both Democrats winning in the state. Washington correspondent Kelly Meyer has reaction to that. Democrats on the verge of taking back the Senate. We were told that we couldn't win this election. Georgia Democrat Raphael Warnock defeated incumbent Republican Senator Kelly Leffler to become the state's first black senator. The 82-year-old hands that used to pick somebody else's cotton went to the polls and picked her youngest son to be a United States senator. Thank you for the confidence and trust that you have placed in me. Wednesday morning, Democratic candidate John Ossoff claimed victory over incumbent Republican David Perdue. I'll be for you in the U.S. Senate. While the vote count is still being finalized, Democratic Senator Chuck Schumer says he's eager to welcome both senators to Capitol Hill and become the next Senate Majority Leader. Help achieve a forward-looking agenda. With an Ossoff and Warnock victory, Democrats will control the Senate, the House, and the White House. They haven't controlled all three since 2009 and will make President-elect Joe Biden's job a whole lot easier. In a statement Wednesday, Biden says he looks forward to working with Pelosi and Majority Leader Schumer. What happened last night how they cheated. Opposition to the results continued from President Trump's supporters <laughs> with protests storming the U.S. Capitol and forcing a lockdown. But despite those actions, Joe Biden will be inaugurated on January 20th, likely with a Democratic Senate by his side. Reporting in Washington, I'm Kelly Meyer. Bring back in Anna and Raquel to talk about what happened in Georgia. Let's start with Anna. This was, you know, pretty much overshadowed with the violence that was happening in Washington, D.C. yesterday. But this is a huge move for Democrats. I mean, they unseated two incumbents in the state of Georgia, typically Republican state. 
No, absolutely. This is very big for um, for Democrats on Capitol Hill. Uh, you know, minority, I guess now majority leader uh, Chuck Schumer uh, said it himself uh, yesterday morning. He said this is a big day in history. Democrats are now in control of the Senate for the first time in, in a while. Uh, and so, you know, with the Democrats in ma uh, majority in the Senate and the House and with the White House, uh, it just, um, you know, Biden's uh, uh, push to get certain bills through uh, in the House and the Senate and all the way to his desk, it's just more likely now because the Senate does control what bills will go uh, to the floor for a vote. And so uh, this is a big day for Democrats to be able to flip both of those seats in, in Georgia, especially a state that uh, has been uh, red for so long, uh, you know, that I think everyone, uh, just the money and the time that was spent there, everyone was pretty, pretty shocked to see that flip, but also not so shocked because uh, we saw it in the presidential election and the numbers and the turnout there as well. And you talked about it being historic, like um, Kelly Meyer said in her package, it's been since 2009, since all three have been in control. Raquel, I want you to talk a little bit about the significance. I know Anna touched on how that will make um, policy making and things like that for the Democratic Party a lot easier now that they're all three in control. Well, like Anna was saying, it really is a blue wave giving Democrats, um, you know, a lot of power to get across some of the agenda items that uh, President-elect Biden is promising. We already heard from, like, Anna mentioned, uh, soon to be Majority Leader Senator uh, Schumer, who talked about one of the first things they are actually going to do is try to get those $2,000 stimulus checks across the finish line. We know that uh, just last week or two weeks ago, I've lost track, uh, Senator, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell uh, was the one who blocked that bill from passing after it passed in the Democratic-controlled House. So these are some of the things that Democrats are eyeing to to pass across the, the finish line. And, and I know there is a long list of legislative issues that they have been trying to get passed in the Senate the last few years, but have not been able to. So uh, the this is why we saw so many people really campaigning in Georgia, stumping there for the last few weeks, trying to get people out to vote. But in the end, even Republicans in the state of Georgia believe that uh, people were not motivated to show up to the polls on the Republican side because many of them believe that the presidential election itself was rigged. And ladies, before we go, I kind of want to wrap it back up by going back to D.C. and the violence that we saw. Um, if you could touch on the fact that there is a curfew put in place, um, you know, there's multiple law enforcement agencies there just in case unrest could erupt again. Yeah, that curfew uh, that was put in place yesterday, we are told that we're in a state of emergency essentially until inauguration, which is on January 20th. Uh, and there is just a lot more law enforcement presence on the streets today, just walking around downtown uh, by the Capitol. You can just see a lot of people in the streets just, uh, you know, so definitely much more secure DC uh, this morning than we saw yesterday. Raquel, your final thought? Oh, just to echo Anna, there there is definitely uh, more presence here. I think people definitely feel a little bit safer yesterday after we saw uh, such a lack of police presence when people started to breach the Capitol security. Uh, I know there was a hold up with the National Guard being deployed, but it seems as if that has all been resolved. There's been a lot of criticism. Uh, so uh, looking forward to a more secure day here in Washington. Uh, I know the city officials are asking people to stay off the streets and to avoid going up to these protesters and trying to engage in any counter protests. They're just asking everyone to stay peaceful and stay home. And more than 50 arrests after yesterday. For more information on that, you can click on the website you're on right now. Thank you, ladies. Anna Warnicki and Raquel Martin out of Washington, D.C. Make sure you stay safe out there. Thanks so much for joining us for this edition of Newsfeed. Now, we hope you're going to join us tomorrow. Same place, same time. Make it a great Thursday.